What's up everybody, back again. Packers training camp day five. I have a lot to talk about. There's just so many moving parts. There's a lot of rotation and some guys like the second and third strings are getting moved into like reps with the fir the ones. So it's, you're really able to see how these people or these players, um, you know, adjust to what they're asked to do and who steps up and who's kind of, you know, seems like it's too, the moment's too big for, for them. It's just um, it's really interesting to see how these young guys kind of develop along and, and um, who really starts to show up and who you can t you know how you can tell um, what guys are gonna be good in the league and what guys may take some time to you know figure it out. But all in all, so far Packers training camp has been awesome to watch. So many really great plays. A lot of guys doing you know things that we didn't know they could do and and. Were never asked them was never asked of them to do but we you know they're really stepping up and doing their job which is great to see i you know it's hard not to be super optimistic obviously none of the games have started yet we're all just seeing these guys playing you know shorts and t-shirts you know they just put the pads on but um shoulder pads on but still they um the competition is just is so high on all the teams across the league. I mean, I, I watch, um, you know, some training camp highlight videos and stuff from other teams, uh, you know, the Dolphins and, the, you know, the Bears or the Jets or whoever, you know, and it seems like all these teams are super optimistic about how their team looks right now. You know, you hear so much about Tyreek Hill talking about that Miami Dolphins, um, that my, Miami Dolphins offense. So it's really... A lot. There's so much great talent across the league. It's um, going to be really close. I think these, you know, last year, the AFC West was such a crazy battle. It'll be that again this year. Um, NFC North, all the teams should be better. I mean, the Packers should kind of stay where they, they're at, and then all the other teams look like they're going to be better this year. The Lions, the Vikings, and the Bears. So, <laughs> oh my. So, we will, uh, <laughs> we will see how that goes comes along but um Packers training camps what we're focused on who's gonna step up who's gonna be the guy who's gonna make it and it's been really exciting and fun to watch just this you know like I said these young guys Quay Walker just you can see the explosiveness the ability to reach sideline to sideline the tackling ability you know the burst the um the pursuit speed you know the the makeup speed and all that so He's just, he's going to be really good. He's just got to figure out figure it all out a little bit more. But I think that Quay is going to be a really dominant linebacker. Obviously, he's got Devondre Campbell to learn from and watch. All pro last year. He made a great play um, in, today in day five, intercepting a, or tipping a pass. He didn't pick it off. He tipped it up. Uh, one that Rodgers was trying to get over the middle to Lazard. Campbell backpedaled to the middle of the field and was able to get his hand up on, on it so he's he's already in game form I, I just really like Campbell I like how he just comes does his business works doesn't say much and just grinds it out and he is really really good so um super exciting to see him um do well obviously he got paid so you just kind of always wonder how guys are going to perform after they get paid seems like he's not one of the guys that's going to let his play diminish he's going to just keep going and going and going and trying to improve Rashawn Gary looks like a totally like it's totally unfair for anybody who's really trying to block him he's just you know so explosive so disruptive quick fast the bend i mean he really is going to be unstoppable this season i keep projecting 15 plus sacks for gary i think he could easily do that as long as his health permits and um yeah it's just really fun to watch his growth i mean he came into the league after not playing a whole lot in college at michigan you know he kind of came in for those run um the pass obvious plays and all that so you know his stats could have been better but they never really utilized him like they should have at michigan and i really think that the the smith brothers bringing gary in and kind of teaching him the ways has really showed up especially this off season especially this training camp you see you know some of the the second string defense was struggling so gary went in there and he, he hyped them all up he got in the center of them tried to you know give them a pep talk and 
that's just what you want to see out of your veterans and your leaders, your the guys that you know are supposed to come in now and take take over the team to try to you know be that guy that other players can look to and turn to when they when they ha- they're having troubles or issues with stuff on and off the field. So very important, very awesome to see. I did not expect that from Rashawn Gary just because of what I you know kind of heard about him through college and stuff. But I think Green Bay's really kind of had a a huge effect on him as a person and how he carries his, himself nowadays and you know goes about his business. So love to see that from Rashawn. I really do. Um, Unleashed Bane. Can't wait. So we will see how that goes. I'm talking about the defensive line or the defense still. Uh, Devontae Wyatt, you know, he's showing up. He's got some explosive plays. You can see the quickness. You can see the steps. I think he's just got to kind of take a step back and kind of just get used to what, what's happening and kind of try to see it before it happens. Zach Tom, you know, I, I think he's going to be a stud. I, you guys know I keep talking about him and how good he is. He's going to be starting caliber at all five positions, left tackle, left guard, center, right ta- or right guard and right tackle. Um, Tom was one-on-one with Wyatt and just completely stonewalled him. Wyatt's a big, powerful man, and for Tom to do something like that is just just shows that he's going to be um, something special in this league. I really am excited to watch how his game translates to the NFL and see what position they kind of want to put him at. His positions in college were center and left tackle. Obviously, center and left tackle are pretty much occupied as long as Bach comes back and um, Myers is there. So we will see um, how that where Tom ends up. But at this point, it looks like he's going to be a starter on this line, the way they kind of have been moving him around with other guys and trying to just see what combinations fit on that all line. Today, the starting offensive line was Yash at left tackle. Um, John Runyon Jr. at left guard, Josh Myers at center, uh, Zach Hansen at um, right guard, and Royce Newman at right tackle. Again, I don't really like Newman and Hansen on that right side, but as long as the blind side, the left side, is blocked up for Rodgers, I think they'll be okay. Obviously, plugging in Bach and Jenkins into the mix with that line, and then adding you know Tom in the middle, I think it's going to be a very stout, very um, disciplined, and a very good offensive line for Rodgers uh, heading into the 2022 season. Whatever five guys they pick, it's going to be the best five, and I think um, it's going to be super solid no matter what who who comes out of the, on top of that. You know, so um, yeah, on you know defense again. So a lot of just. It's very interesting stuff to watch. Um, there's guys like Tipa Galai, Tipa Galai from last year who, you know, played special teams here and there, was out on a few snaps. Sometimes, you know, when, when the game's out of reach at the end, he'll, he would have came in. But he's really starting to come on this offseason. You can see that he's starting to figure it out, um, putting it all together on the field. He's a big, fast kid. You know, he's got the skill set. It's just translating that into the game of football at the NFL level that he has to work on. I think he's getting there, though. He's really been impressive in this camp, and I looked for more from him as we continue. Another guy outside linebacker as well, Ladarius Hamilton. Those two guys met basically at the quarterback, and you can see the explosion. You can see you know, Ladarius Hamilton might be even better than Tipa. Uh, Tipa, Tipa, um, <laughs> but um, I th- I think both of those guys have a shot at making the team. I you know behind Gary and Preston, I'm not too high on any of the, any of those guys really. Randy Ramsey and um, Jonathan Garvin, I'm not super like impressed by either one. So if Tipa and Ladarius can come in and really dominate, they can probably take over that three and four outside linebacker spot and be basically the backups for the the starters, Gary and Preston. Um, That's another interesting uh, roster battle to watch this offseason. Other guys that have been working with the ones have been Isaiah McDuffie, the middle linebacker, Rico Gafford, um, the cornerback, kick returner kind of guy. But they really like what they're seeing out of him this offseason or this training camp. I really do like seeing a guy that's, you know, kind of didn't really make it as a receiver he gets bumped back over the corner 
and now he's starting to kind of understand what what needs to be done and what they're asking of him. I talked about him a little bit in day four. Um, he's got super speed. He is only 5'10", 180, like 184, but I think Rico does have a chance to make the squad on special teams and as like the fifth, sixth kind of cornerback if the if uh, the Packers want to go that route. I just speed kills, and he has plenty of it. So something to watch for. Um, like I said, they kind of have been rotating a lot of guys in and out from the ones, the twos, the threes, just trying to see who fits, see who meshes, just try to get you know an, a read on – and who they might or who they're going to keep. It's crazy because, you know, they keep 53, then they get, you know, a certain amount of practice squad guys too, so that that, that kind of extends the roster a little bit. But to go from 90 to 53, and right now you, we probably know at least 40 of the guaranteed starters, so there's not a whole lot of spots really that are open. Um, obviously, anybody can lose their job at any time, but by not performing – besides maybe Rodgers, but still, um, he, he's held to such a high standard um, himself. He holds it to himself, and we all hold it <laughs> to him as well. So uh, he, he probably is safe. But all these other guys, you know, just because <laughs> you were on the team last year doesn't mean you're going to make it this year. So you really got to step up and show out and show them that you are ready and you are here to play. So, um yeah, other guys notable on the defense, defense. Jaron Reed's been really, you know, putting pressure on the quarterback, run stuffing, just read and react. He's been a really solid piece. He's been doing really well this camp. And Dean Lowry, all over the field. It's just, you like seeing guys that aren't going to be, you know, the every down defense alignment showing that they can they could be in every down defense alignment and when you rotate them in they're going to be ready to go and that's huge you know especially when you have a guy like Kenny Clark who you need to give rest to you need to be able to put somebody next to him as well that can you know eat up blocks and allow other guys like Gary and Preston and the and Quay Walker and all those guys in the middle to run free and and get to the quarterback or you know blow the running back up in the backfield so um, it just I really just like seeing all these guys kind of contribute. It's just so nice that each person or each player has, you know, not everybody, not all of them are perfect every single play. Some of these guys have had some issues or some flops or whatever, but for the most part, I've seen so much good from them. You know, the, the few little bad things or stuff they can clean up. All the good is stuff that, you know, we haven't seen from them yet, and it's just really exciting to see how their game is really translated and, and developed since they, you know, maybe were here a year ago or two years ago or whatever the case may be, especially like the guys on the offensive line, you know, JRJ, um, John Running, John Running Jr. and Royce Newman, you know, both guys the Packers brought in and um, now they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're playing with the ones. So they're starting level or starting caliber linemen and, it's just really amazing what the Packers do with these offensive linemen. They draft them fourth, fifth, sixth round and bring them in and develop them into guys that can be starters in this league, and that's huge. Um, the, the list goes on and on for years about, you know, different linemen that they take later on and, and end up being very successful. David Bakhtiari, he was a fourth rounder out of Colorado. Kind of a – no one really had them him on the radar to be, like, the best left tackle, maybe second best now to Trent Williams, but still – it's, that's why you pay the scouts and all that because they find stuff like that and Packers have been really great at doing that for many years now and and that's where it all starts down in the trenches it's so important to get that offensive line you know situated so protection is there for running and passing and um just set, it just sets everything else up you're getting beat down in the trenches then quarterback doesn't have time to throw your running backs don't have time to run and it's just a big mess so um I <laughs> Can't wait. Super excited. We're so close to that first preseason game. Um, the Packers play the 12th, and the first one is the Hall of Fame game on the 4th, which is the Jaguars and the Raiders. So that is going to be exciting. That's just coming up on Thursday. So stay tuned for the next one. Peace out, guys. See you in the next